Um, good evening and thank you for joining our program. We will start in the next couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay, good evening, it's 6.05 p.m. and we will go on and get started on um, with our program this evening. My name is Tyrone Alexander and I'm currently serving as the interim director for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion for the city of Columbus, I'm sorry, city of Toledo. On behalf of um, Mayor Wade Capsicabich and members of the administration, we'd like to thank you for um, participating in on, night, on tonight's program that will provide your company an overview of smaller contracting opportunities that are coming up across the city during our 2021 contracting season. Many of you have been requesting more information on upcoming moving, janitorial, small rehab projects, and other contracting opportunities. And tonight we have various departments and divisions available to help you uh, with what will be coming up and answer any questions that you may have. Um, there is a chat function in the, um, in the Zoom. And if you would put any of your questions in the Q&A box, we will um, review those questions as we get closer to the end of the program. Um, once again, in addition, um, if you are interested in wanting to become um, an MBE or WBE certified um, company, we will be having information that we'll be talking about that as well. And also we'll have an overview of planet bids um, in accordance with number of requests. Um, the city of Toledo is also in the midst of conducting a disparity study which will include our business community, and we will um, want to provide you a brief overview of that as well. I'm going to move um, the, the call over to Katie Crosby, um, Chief of Staff, so she can talk real briefly about the diversity study. Thanks, Tyrone. Hi, I'm Katie Crosby, and I am the Chief of Staff for the City of Toledo. As Tyrone mentioned, we are in the process of kicking off our disparity study. And what a disparity study does is it does an analysis of the city's bidding opportunities utilization of minority and women-owned farms and does an assessment of the availability of those farms in our community to determine whether or not the city has been a passive participant in discriminating against minority and women-owned businesses and then provides recommendations for how we can, rec can correct that. So what those recommendations will then do is provide us an analysis of firms that are available to do business with the city based on the needs of the city and then give us opportunities to set goals so that we can reach um, out to more minority and women-owned contractors. The study will kick off in the next few weeks and it will take about 12 months. And so within the next 12 months, you'll, you'll see a list of recommendations and we'll be talking about how we're implementing those recommendations. There will be a point in time where our consulting firm will be reaching out to small businesses. So there be on the lookout for a communication about how you can engage with the process and give feedback on, on your um, on your experience doing business with the city and what you would like to see changed in that experience. So be on the lookout for an email from us and we hope that you all are able to participate on this opportunity as well. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jody Prude. I'm the manager of parks operations for the division of parks, recreation and forestry. The Division of Parks, Recreation and Forestry in partnership with the Division of Code Enforcement jointly manages citywide mowing for the city of Toledo. While we are entering the second year of our three-year contract, we still have some mowing opportunities to offer. We have some packages which consist of city-owned properties along with privately owned nuisance properties. We have five city parks and 29 right-of-way parcels which consists of cul-de-sacs, guardrails, medians, and open green spaces. 
The mowing season is projected to begin on April 15th and run through October 15th, weather permitting. The bid is currently active. In addition to the mowing opportunities, the Division of Parks, Recreation and Forestry is currently offering landscaping bid opportunity for the flower beds and flower pots located on Reynolds Road. This bid request is responsible for purchasing and planting the flowers, maintenance of the flower beds and flower pots, which could consist of removing uh, weeds and uh, debris, and irrigation maintenance and irrigation repairs. This bid is also currently active. These are the current bid offerings for the Division of Parks, Recreation and Forestry. Dennis. <clears throat> Thanks, Jody. Uh, my name is Dennis Kennedy. I'm the commissioner of the Division of Code Enforcement for the city of Toledo. Uh, code Enforcement uh, handles in partnership with the Division of Parks, Rec and Forestry, the grass mowing program. Uh, but what I'm here to uh, talk with you about today are two other activities that you may not know code enforcement uh, takes on, uh, one which is board up and one which is graffiti removal. Uh, graffiti removal, we'll start with that, uh, consists of two programs, graffiti cover up and then graffiti abatement. Uh, the graffiti cover up uh, is, you know, painting over graffiti uh, in public spaces, on overpasses, uh, in areas where it impacts uh, the motoring public. Um, graffiti abatement is the full removal of graffiti. Uh, usually on buildings of historic designation or uh, with specialty facades such as brick in uh, areas located uh, throughout Toledo that are significant such as the uptown neighborhood, uh, the Old West End or Main Street in East Toledo. This bid is expected to go out at the end of the first quarter in 2021 to secure vendors who can also perform soft work for us uh, with graffiti removal, uh, which is for uh, headstones, um, stones out in the public right of way that we don't want etched or damaged. Um, so we're looking for specialty equipment, preferably um, beyond water, sand and steam removal. Uh, the second activity is the board up activity. Uh, and there are three levels of board ups that we will be bidding out. Uh, with uh, demolition board ups, which is securing vacant structures, preparing for demolition, uh, preservation board ups, which are uh, which is mothballing a building and preserving it in such a manner that development can occur at a later date. Uh, and then there is uh, significant uh, preservation, uh, which those that is reserved for buildings uh, with immediate impact to major thoroughfares, um, community anchor areas. Uh, murals that you see on vacant buildings along um, like Monroe Street and Main Street in East Toledo. Um, that will, uh, that bid will also go out the first quarter of 2021 and we will be uh, seeking vendors who can perform that work for us, um, uh, you know, on a, a price per board basis um, with painting um, and then the art installation as a side category uh, in partnership with the Arts Commission. Um, next up, uh, we are I'm sorry, I actually am not even sure who's next up. Oh, I would like to turn this over to Fleet and Facility Operations, uh, Jim Lewis. Hello, I'm Jim Lewis, Administrator of Facility Operations. Uh, facility Operation has janitorial uh, contracting, subcontracting annual opportunities for janitorial services at various city of Toledo buildings. Our janitorial services range from two days a week service at our smaller locations up to six days a week at our larger locations. All bid information is handed out at a pre-bid walkthrough meeting on our smaller locations. Our larger locations are advertised through planet bids. Roof repairs. Uh, facility operations has contracting opportunities for roof repairs, which range from small repairs to complete roof replacements which include pitched roof and flat roofs. Types of roofing including shingle, EPDM, TPO, PVC, built up roofing and metal. We also have contracting opportunities for gutter clean, repair, repairs and replacement, which aids in the life expectancy of those roofs. Um, most of the total roof replacement jobs are advertised on planet bids. Repairs and smaller jobs are contracted through my office. Uh, flooring, stripping, and waxing opportunities for floor stripping and waxing of VCT, which is final composite tile. Um, 
flooring and or cleaning and buffing of terrazzo ceramic marble flooring in several city buildings and community centers. Uh, four, I have backflow devices. We offer contracting opportunities for our backflow testing and certification to annually to comply with state mandate. Backflow devices include domestic backflows, uh, boiler protection backflows, pool systems, and fire system backflows. Uh, five, we have uh, fire extinguisher services is needed on an annual basis to test and certify all portable fire extinguishers throughout the city facilities. This includes replacement of faulty portable fire extinguishers and or adding the additional portable fire extinguishers per code. Um, I can be reached for questions via my email at jim.lewis at toledo.oh.gov or at my office at 419-936-2560. Next, I would like to introduce Dave O'Brock, Fleet Operations Administrator. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, again, my name is Dave Obrock and I'm the administrator of Fleet Operations. Uh, Fleet Operations is an internal service organization that supports 2,200 pieces of uh, city owned equipment. Our equipment ranges from uh, cars to heavy duty trucks, from lawnmowers to trailers. So if you have anything with wheels, um, basically it's probably a good bet that we would, um, it's, part of our, it's part of our fleet. Um, opportunities, opportunities exist um, with body and paint shop vendors. Um, we need all different sizes of body shops, you know, just because you might just only specialize in, um, let's just say, uh, small cars or um, light duty pickups um, body shop, you know, we're interested in you, you know, you know, feel free to bid when that advertisement comes out. Um, it's the same thing when it comes to heavy and um, light duty exhaust um, um, shops that we're, we're interested in. Um, if you only work on light duty exhaust, only on car exhaust, that's okay. Please feel free to uh, bid when that advertisement becomes available. Um, glass and windshields. Uh, we replace a lot of glass and a lot of windshields um, on our city owned equipment. Um, if you own a small uh, parts store, for instance, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we put out bids for batteries and oil and filters and coolant and tires and brakes and belts and hoses. So anything related to um, automotive industry, that's what we're in need of. So um, no matter the size of your company, we need you to support us in keeping our equipment up and running. Um, once again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. And it's my pleasure to introduce our next presenter, um, Jerry Kolkowski. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is, uh, as mentioned, my name is Jerry Kolkowski. Um, and I am the lead grant program manager for the city of Toledo Department of Neighborhoods. Uh, and I am representing tonight the uh, lead-based paint hazard control grant programs. Um, these programs uh, work with licensed lead contractors to make residential units lead safe through abatement and interim controls. Um, for example, uh, windows and doors re door replacements, vinyl siding installation, painting, et cetera. The Department of Neighborhoods is projecting to make uh, approximately 350 residential units lead safe over the next three years. Um, it's roughly by the end of uh, 2023. Individual contracts can range uh, between uh, from approximately $2,000 to about $32,000, uh, but the average range is about uh, $12,000 to $13,000 a piece. Contractors have to be licensed and vetted in order to work with the lead grant program. Uh, and licensing uh, does require uh, the state of Ohio lead contractor license. Um, uh, the ODH state lead abatement contractor license uh, to, in order to get that, you do have to complete an in-person 40 hour class, pass the test at the end of the class. Uh, you must have one year experience as a lead abatement worker or two years experience in lead asbestos or other environmental remediation or construction work. Uh, you submit an application to the state to take the state test, pass the state test, 
um, pay the licensing fee. And then every two years, uh, you are required to take an eight hour refresher course and pay um, the renewal fee to the, uh, to the state. Um, it is a high re highly regulated um, uh, process for lead abatement contractors. Um, the um, uh, lead abatement contractors need to use uh, Ohio Department of Health state lead abatement workers um, licensed uh, for all workers on site until uh, containment and clearance is complete. Um, contractors need to have a DUNS number. They need to be registered in the system for award management. Um, and they also need to be uh, registered as a city of Toledo vendor as well. Um, oh, and uh, lastly, uh, uh, contractors do need to carry li uh, liability insurance. And for each individual uh, contract and unit, they will have to have a liability insurance for that particular uh, owner and unit as well. Uh, recently, the decision was made to waive the City of Toledo Remodelers License requirement uh, for City of Toledo lead grant programs only. Uh, this is for non-structural work only. Any job that does require structural work will have to be contracted to someone with a remodeler's license, uh, someone who is on our list. And likewise, any and all mechanical work will still require permits to be pulled and inspected. Um, our program is a little bit different from uh, some of the other City of Toledo programs as far as um, uh, uh, con uh, award contracting. Um, we pre-vet all of our contractors first for uh, lead licensing and, and all the things that I had mentioned. Once the contractor is licensed and vetted, uh, registered, uh, they contact the Department of Neighborhoods and we can add them onto our award rotation. Uh, our program uses an agreed upon fixed pricing scale. So once work specifications are written, costs are determined based on the scale and the, um, and the contract is awarded to the next vetted and eligible contractor on the rotation. Um, Jerry, Jerry, before you move forward, we did have a question from Danielle Mason. She said, okay. we don't be offering, offering the class anytime soon. I'm assuming this is a class associated with your late abetment process. Can you talk about that any? If well, um, actually, it could be uh, it could be one of two things. Um, so uh, right now, we do not have any uh, training scheduled for uh, lead abatement contractors. We do refer uh, uh, folks uh, to the um, uh, let's say the licensed and approved trainer for Northwest Ohio, which is lead experts. Um, and you can see on the on the slide that's up on the screen right now, helpful websites, um, they are listed. Uh, so folks can um, can look them up online. They do post their um, uh, their training schedule online when they're gonna be in Toledo. They do do trainings in Toledo as well. Um, now that's for our lead grant program and um, folks that are licensed lead contractors able to do abatement work. Um, and uh, Stephanie Beebe, who is our lead safe coordinator, who will be speaking right after me, will be talking about um, some trainings coming up for um, uh, local lead inspectors to work with the ordinance. So the, I'm not sure if the question was about lead contractors um, or for lead local lead inspectors. Jerry, that was um, okay. Jerry, um, I'm going to add a couple things that she added here. She stated that um, the lead certification, the last one, um, what that she saw was in Finley and Cleveland. And then she says, I know the Department of Neighborhoods had mentioned last year that there was probably funding where the city of Toledo was paying for contractors to get certified. Is that happening? This is for lead contractors. Right. So for right now, um, we do not have anything scheduled uh, for contractors. Um, uh, when we do, uh, when we do schedule trainings, uh, we do put out notices uh, that those trainings are available. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jerry. Um, I hope sure. we answered your question. Um, I hope we answered your question. Um, and if we didn't, once again, Danielle, if you didn't, um, um, if you, we'll give you some contact information for you to follow up with the department um, after, um, at the end of the presentation. So Stephanie, if you wanna go next, that will be great. Hi everyone. Um, let's see, I hope you can see me. There we go, okay. 
I'm Stephanie Beebe. I'm the Lead Safe Coordinator for the City of Toledo Department of Neighborhoods. Um, I work alongside the previous speaker, Jerry, to provide lead programming to the community. And one of my main priorities is the implementation of the new Lead Safe Ordinance throughout the city. Uh, to that end, the city, we're partnering uh, to accelerate the growth of the private market to provide lead inspection and lead abatement services, including the use of EPA, renovation, repair, and painting certified contractors. Now, just to be clear, this is not a city paid bidding process, but a private market need that we are supporting. According to our data, there are around 4,000 inspections that will need to be done for the entire city to be in compliance with the new ordinance, and many that's annually, and many of those properties will also require painting or abatement work in order to pass that inspection. So there's money to be made here for full or part-time entrepreneurs who want to start their own businesses, or for those currently in the construction, inspection, hazard abatement, related fields that want to upscale their current workforce and expand and the services they provide. To that end, we've created a sort of one-stop shop for lead workers at our website, which is ToledoLeadSafe.com. And there is a list of training classes there, details on the process, and more to get you started. We're partnering with private trainers. Um, Jerry had mentioned lead experts. That's the one trainer right now that we've got. And we've got several more signed up for spring and the rest of this year. Those trainers will provide the classes and we're working with other public and nonprofit agencies to provide support services for small business owners who wanna get involved and do this work. So please visit our website, ToledoLeadSafe.com and reach out if you have any questions regarding the inspection uh, world or I can get you started on the lead worker side too with, uh, with Jerry. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Valerie. I'm the manager of inclusion and contract compliance for the city of Toledo. Uh, tonight, I have the pleasure of giving you an overview of how to get minority business or woman business enterprise your certification with the city of Toledo. First, I'd like to start with a brief uh, comment on the mowing program alone. If this is your first or second year, if you would like to access a conditional application for that program, please email us at diversity and inclusion at toledo.oh.gov. And I can get one of those to you and uh, briefly explain what you need to do for that. To qualify for that, you must be a local business and a sole proprietor. So for our standard certification, you would go to the city of Toledo's website, toledo.oh.gov, click departments and then choose diversity and inclusion. You're going to scroll down and click Minority and Women Business Enterprise. And at the top then on the next screen, it will ask you to select an application. <clears throat> if this is your first submission with us, you'll select the one that says MBE WBE certification packet, which is what we refer to as the full packet. And that document will not only provide you your application to fill out, but it also provides you a checklist of the paperwork that you'll need to submit along with that notarized application. Some of the basics you, in order to be considered for MBE and WBE certification status, you have to be in business at least a year. Uh, for a minority business um, or woman business owned, 51% must be owned and controlled uh, by the minority and or women or women or minorities. Um, you, uh, the business owner should possess um, knowledge of the business and the industry in which, and so that they can prove that they have the day-to-day -day control over that business. They should exercise the final authority over all aspects of the business, like, such as the financial and business management. Um, and then I'd like to mention that we do have a current reciprocal agreement with the state of Ohio. So if you already are certified with the Department of Administrative Services in the state of Ohio as a MBE or WBE, the state of Ohio this year or uh, last year, sorry, in 2020, did finally implement a WBE certification process. So if you hold one of those current certifications, you can utilize that reciprocally with our department um, the first time you apply for certification. So how that works is when you're at the top of that menu that I said drops down and you select what application you want, you would select the reciprocal application, which is essentially a two-page um, affidavit type 
application and you would submit your certificate from Ohio along with that. And we honor those for the length of time that the Ohio certificate is good for. And then of course, upon that expiration, we're gonna ask you to please go ahead and certify with us fully at the city of Toledo so we can get you on our permanent list. You'll still be on our permanent list, but so you can be permanently on our list and we can continue that way. Um, I'd like to give you just an idea of some of the documentation you may need to gather. It's gonna be stuff like artic your articles of incorporation, um, if you're a corporation, your stocks, any partnership agreements, your work resume, any kind of licensing that goes along with your occupation or work type, proof of insurance, workers comp, um, federal business taxes. The one thing I do like to mention is, you know, please answer all the questions on the application. And if you need any assistance with that, please contact us if you're not sure. Um, obviously, if you leave something blank, or your, you know, or omit a document, it does cause delays. Uh, when you're listed on our list, you're listed according to your specialty, and we'll list what services or construction services or supplies you provide in detail. If you have different services to offer, we don't list you under different categories, but we will put the different service areas in bold print for someone to easier reference. Uh, our current Minority business enterprise goals for the city of Toledo are 15% of our construction contracts, 10% for our goods and services contracts, and 21% for our HUD projects. Some of the benefits of being MBE or WBE certified are they're part of our best bid criteria. You obviously increase your business exposure by being on our list. They're available to the public, um, including you know, a lot of larger prime contractors that may be interested in soliciting subcontractors. Um, there's also a separate list for the mowing program in that it's, it's just a little bit different, but is, there's also a list for that. Um, so there's potential clients and work perhaps being generated from your company being listed on those lists. And of course, it's a great resource for you to pass, uh, foster those relationships that you want with other businesses as you grow or um, expand your services or your the individual business. So why we certify? Uh, we certify the Office of Diversity and Inclusion upholds the participation goals the mayor set for the city of Toledo. Um, the certification process in and of itself is to maintain the integrity of the program and to meet our contracting goals for disadvantaged businesses. We obviously serve our community by offering our quality MBE and WB lists that provide those diverse choices for your business. And of course that develops in turn competition so that we obtain the best prices for the Toledo citizens for purchases and projects. On one of the slides, of course, I've listed some of our community partners contact information. Um, you can again, email diversityandinclusion at toledo.oh.gov if, um, it's, it's on the screen right now. Those uh, community partners offer free services to minority businesses in terms of all aspects of your business. That's not something we at the city of Toledo can offer you, but certainly we can refer you to some of our community partners so that you can follow up on that if you need assistance in some way. So, and finally, why diversity in contracting? I like to go over that. It's proven to increase business profits and it brings creativity to your business, which is proven to increase profits. Okay, Valerie, before you move forward, we have about five questions that have come through the chat that I think are germane for us to ask at this time. Okay. Um, Vicki Rawls has submitted two questions. Her first question is, my company supplies products for contractors um, to use in their jobs and is WBE, WBE certified. How do I take advantage of opportunities at the city? And then her second question is, I'm under the impression that WBE organizations aren't really recognized. Is that changing? Can you answer those two questions, Valerie? Okay. Um, as far as what it takes to be certified as a WBE, it would probably be best if you contacted me at the office and we can go over that. You may hold a certification 
um, that we can honor reciprocally or not. So, you know, I'd like to go over that with you. In terms of is it changing, we do recognize WBE businesses um, have a goal percentage addressed to those. However, it is part of our best bid criteria. So it is the same recognition, if you will. Okay, Valerie, the next question on the chat sorry. is Don, Don Marshall. And sorry, I'm sorry. If I, if this is Katie. I'm sorry if I could just chime in. Sure. I do just want to also point out that as we complete the disparity study process, that designation for WBE, if it's found, if it's found that um, we have appropriate justification for an, a WBE program, that will be added to our designation. So some of that may come out of that process as well. Sorry about that. That's it. Thank you, Katie. I'm like and Valerie. The next question is from Don Marshall, and she says, "For for the for the minority programs, local are they uh, only for the city of Toledo?" She's from Monroe, Michigan. You can certify with us outside of the city of Toledo in different states. Unlike the state of Ohio, they do not. We do, however, we do have a requirement that you must uh, um, provide us with a certification from the state in which you reside. Uh, some of that is flexible because some states don't have their own individual programs. So we have, we will also accept the Department of Transportation certification um, for minority or women owned businesses in the state in which you uh, reside. Mostly that is because obviously we can't fly to different states um, and do conduct site visits, et cetera, which is a part of our certification process. But again, if you need more detail on that, please feel free to contact us. Okay, we have two more questions. We have a question from Rhonda Sewell. She says, can you define the one year requirement before seeking certification, one year requirement from the beginning of your LLC or incorporation of your business? I think really the one year requirement is um, probably set like that to ensure that you have at least a year's worth of federal business taxes because that's part of the submission, part of your submission when you apply for MBE or WBE certification. Um, so usually, you know, you're, it's going to take you that full year. Some businesses already have their year in before they file, but they still have to wait. But what we usually do in that case is if they've reached out to me, we get everything assembled except for the taxes. And then the minute you file the taxes um, in that year after your uh, you know, constitute your first year, we can then go ahead and certify you rather quickly because we have everything else assembled. Okay, we have two more questions and then we'll move on to the next section. We have another question from Danielle Mason. She says, Valerie, are the goals, um, are these goals or are these um, set-asides and mandatory requirements? And then also as you grow or expand services, how do, how do we have those various specialties added to our certification on the city of Toledo's WBE, um, um, MBE list? Okay, so there are no set-asides or requirements at the city of Toledo. Um, we have a goal-based um, minority participation goal. Uh, as you grow or expand your services, so when you expand your services provided, so if you mean, if you start out and you add different services or businesses, it's best to contact because sometimes we can add those on. Um, sometimes in some cases, they need to be separately certified. It it's going to depend on the structure. It's going to depend on, um, you know, some various factors. So again, I hate to say this because situations can be different, but it would be best to contact us. Um, but you can, like, if you just, if you so if you start out and you have the same company and let's say you start out in lawn mowing and you add snow removal and it's under the same umbrella, if you will, we can certainly add that. It would just be contacting our office. I would have you fill out some kind of form, something formal so that that would be in the file and then we would add that to the list. Okay, thank you. I have, um, um, Rhonda Sewell also mentioned, thank you very much, Rhonda. We, 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 forget to, we forgot to omit the um, Toledo Lucas County Library as one of our partners in helping employees or helping individuals with their um, MBE resources. So we do want, we will add that to our slide deck. So thank you, Rhonda, for that, um, for that um, mention. And then the last two questions are from Netra Hilliard. And our last question is from Netra Hilliard. How do you become a registered, how do you become registered as a permanent MBE, WBE with the city? 
Hi, Netra. Um, if you've been in the mowing program and you're in the middle of transitioning from that conditional certification to what you know we're saying is a permanent, please contact me and, and I will um, go ahead and help you with that personally if you'd like. Otherwise, you what I um, spoke about earlier as I started, you know, going onto the city's website and getting what we refer to the full application and submitting those documents. Um, that's essentially what you would do. And then at that point, instead of the seasonal conditional, of course, you would you would be on the list every two years and go through a renewal process. Okay, thanks a lot, Valerie. And once again, um, what we'll be doing is recording this um, presentation. It'll be placed on our website um, um, shortly thereafter. We, um, just due to the essence of time, we want to move forward. Um, our next person will be... Um, in our Department of Purchasing and Finance, and I believe we are starting with Brian Benner. <clears throat> Thank you, Tyrone. Uh, once again, my name is Brian Benner, and I'm joined tonight by my colleague, uh, Amy Betts, and we both work in our purchasing division. And we're, we're here tonight to talk to you about how do you, how do you actually bid on projects with the city? Uh, before I turn it over to Amy, I would just like to say that one of the, the valuable things you can do is to register as a vendor. You, you, and when in that process, which Amy will go into in much more detail, uh, you have the ability to, to say what services or commodities do you offer, do you, can you offer to the city? And every time we advertise a bid that checks off that list for that particular commodity or service, you will get an auto email that this bidding opportunity is out there. So it's it's a, you'll get a lot of traffic, hopefully, and, it, it, and it'll automatically tell you the day that we post the bid for that particular service or commodity. Uh, like the other uh, folks presenting tonight, I'd like to thank you all for taking time to join this, this, uh, this presentation. And having said that, I'll turn it over to Amy. Thank you so much, Commissioner Banner. I am trying to share my screen and it is not allowing me to. Oh. Do you need to click off? Thank you so much. Give me just one second. Let me try to locate the uh, planet bids. There we go. So always, uh, again, this is a my name is Amy and I'm with the City of Toledo Purchasing Department, the buyer for the city. And uh, what I do is the Planet Bids website and the bidding for the city. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to access um, the bidding documents through our website. Uh, so uh, we are going to start off by going to toledo.oh.gov. Now, if you just go straight to planetbids.com, you're not gonna to get to the correct place. So you always wanna make sure you're going through the city's website. Uh, up at the top, you'll see uh, to the right, up at the top right-hand corner under business, if you click on the businesses, there'll be a drop-down menu to where you can uh, click on Planet Bids and it will transition right into our Planet Bids website. Please keep in mind that the county does use Planet Bids as well, but we're two separate entities and two separate bidding websites. If your co company is not registered on this system, you are gonna go ahead and register. It's absolutely free to you as a vendor. You're gonna click on new vendor registration and it's gonna just ask you some basic information to get you registered. Also, when you register, you're gonna be asked to choose from a list of national procurement codes. So I think you can pick maybe up to 20 in the system. So what that does is anytime I put out a bid with one or more of your matching category codes, you'll be automatically notified through the system of that potential bid. That's not restricting you to bid on only those specific bids, but just to give you a heads up that there may be a potential bid your company may be interested in. I do post new bid advertisements every Friday so if you're not notified through the system of a potential bid, maybe make it a habit of going in every Monday morning for additional opportunities. Now at this time, I just wanted to go through uh, how to identify um, some things in the bid. So we're gonna click on the bid opportunities box. And by clicking any of these columns, it will sort automatically um, 
So if you click uh, the stage button, or even when you just log in and go to the bid opportunities, usually all of the uh, bidding or active bids pop up on the top and we'll say bidding in green. So we do have quite a few out uh, at this time. Also due to the pandemic going on right now, about 99% of our bids are e-bid only. And you can tell that uh, format here in this far right column, it will say format. And as you can see, a lot of them do say electronic, but we do are going, we are gonna have a couple this season and currently have one up for our lawn maintenance that is paper or electronic. Even though the Planet Bids website says, and it's either or. So I'm just gonna click on one of these bids just to get you started to see what a bid might look like. Once you click on that, your project, you're gonna see a series of tabs up at the top. The first one is the bid information tab. Scrolling down, you're gonna see things such as the bid due date. You're gonna see the issuing division. This one specifically comes out of our parks department. The project duration, the con contractual terms. Your bid bond information, if any, all of our bids do require per our TMC a 5% uh, bid guarantee due with your bid submittal. So on some of the bids, you may see a dollar amount and some of the bids you may see 5%. That depends whether or not we can derive a grand total from the line items tab we're asking you to quote. So that bid bond could be a cashier's check, official check on a solvent bank or a bid bond from your bonding agent. Scrolling down, you'll also see information about pre-bid meeting, if any, and a lot of them currently are Zoom meetings. You'll see all of our bids do have an open online Q&A. If you have any questions pertaining directly to the specifications, we do ask them, ask you to submit them through the Q&A tab. In order to submit your questions through the Q&A tab, you must be on the prospective bidders list. How to do so, you must access any of the bidding documents on the documents tab that are locked. And these document tabs that are locked have the asterisk over here on the left-hand side of the title. So once I click this, it's gonna prompt me to, to log in, which I've made a generic login just for this presentation. So you must become a prospective bidder to download private documents. In order to be a prospective bidder, once you click on that, you are gonna see a box with your company information in it as registered on the website. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom, it's gonna to wanna to identify your company as a bidder, a non-bidder to receive communications or not to receive communications. On our construction projects, you'll see that it won't say bidder, but it will say, want you to identify yourself either as a prime subcontractor or supplier. Whatever that may be, we're gonna go ahead and click on that and then click done. Once you click done, that's gonna add you not only to the prospective bidders list, but it's gonna allow you to ask any questions and also from here on out, since I'm on the Prospective Bidders tab, I will be notified of any uh, questions that are released, any addendas issued or any edits made to this bid. So I high, strongly encourage you, if you do see a bid that you're interested in to access these documents, get on that Prospective Bidders tab so you will be notified of any future addendas or any changes to that bid. Moving forward, the line items tab are the items we are asking you to quote. Please do not deviate from our structured uh, line items that we're asking you to bid. 
So if you are e-bidding through the system, which as mentioned about 99% of these bids are, once you click place e-bid at the bottom right hand corner, you're gonna accept through the terms and conditions. There's also a pin number you would ben have been assigned uh, once you registered the system, you're gonna have to put in that pin number and it will pop these line items automatically to put in your unit price. Moving forward, as mentioned, the documents tab is gonna have any of the documents associated with this bid, whether it's informational or they are actually documents that are due with your bid. Addendas and emails tab is just that. If there's any addendas or emails sent through this website through the, and as you can see, there are a couple of addendums already issued and emails. Um, so you can go through, if you're on the perspective bidders tab, as mentioned, you will get notified of these automatically. If not, you're gonna manually have to go in and look at this tab. Q and A tab, we had already gone through. And finally, the perspective bidders tab is gonna show any of bidders who have accessed the bidding documents through this website. So if you wanna check out your competition, you can do so on this perspective bidders tab. So that basically is just kind of an overview of um, how the bids system looks like. As mentioned, there are a few documents that are due with your bid submittal that are on this documents tab and also some that you have to provide uh, like your insurance and view of workers compensation from your bonding agents. Um, were there any questions at this time in regards to planet bids? The bid yes, Amy, yes, yes, Amy, this is Ty. There are two questions. The first question is from LaShonda Martre, I believe is how you pronounce the name. And the question is, if your bid is not accepted, how long does it take to get your bid on back? Uh, it, if your bid is not accepted, what was the last part of it? If your bid is not accepted, how long does it take to get your bid bond? Oh, okay. So if you're, I wouldn't see why your bid would not be accepted, just as long as you provide the documentation we ask for and have that bid guarantee with your bid, I don't see why your bid would not be accepted. Generally what happens with the bid guarantees is if you're using a uh, cashier's check or uh, official check on a bank, also we would accept a money order, but no personal checks, no company checks. What happens is I deposit the bid checks and then when the, once the contract is executed for that specific service or product uh, is when I generally refund the bid guarantees back to you. So if you're using a check, I will deposit your check. And once the contract's executed, I will issue you a city of Toledo issue check uh, for your bid guarantee refund. Okay, and I, okay, I guess this is a follow up to that question. What if they didn't win the bid? So- um, You will get it back either way, if you want it or not. Okay, is there a time dimension? I think the question, a time dimension as to when um, generally, I go by the, if you go into the bid on the bid information tab, uh, generally we have a bid validity, uh, meaning 60 days. So uh, when 60 days, meaning 60 days from the uh, due date of the bid, the uh, issuing division is to make a recommendation back to purchasing. So if for some reason the division didn't make it back make a recommendation within this bid validity amount of dates, just give me a call and I'll be more than happy to assist you with refunding your bid guarantee. Sometimes you'll see 30 days, sometimes you'll see 60, 90, 180, et cetera. Okay, and the other question, once again, it's another question from Natra Hilgert. She said, is there a bond, bid bond required for lawn mowing services? For lawn services, we currently have out, yes, there is. Um, as mentioned, generally it's 5% of the bid. However, we had gone in front of council and knocked that down for you guys to, to a flat $250 um, fee. So as mentioned, you will get that back either if you are awarded or not awarded the bid once the contracts are in place. Okay, well, thank you, Amy. Um, thank okay. you. I appreciate you and all the questions that you that you've answered. 
Um, it appears we're coming up to the close to the end of our time this evening and answered all of the questions that have come through the chats this evening. Um, if we can get back to the presentation, I want to real briefly just um, share with you a slide that has pretty much contact information for, um, for our um, participants. Once again, um, if you are interested in the contracts with parks, which consists of mowing, landscaping projects in 2021, um, Jody Prude is your contact. Her email address is jody.prude, P-R-U-D-E at toledo.ohio.gov. Her number of, is 419-936-2875. Um, for code enforcement, anything dealing with mowing, graffiti, abatement and hauling, um, the email address is neighborhoods at toledo.oh.gov and their general contact number is 419-245-1400. Anything dealing with facilities, which consists of janitorial, roof repair, floor stripping and waxing, backflow janitorial services, on fire extinguisher services, the contact is Jim Lewis, is jim.lewis at toledo.oh.gov. His contact number is 419-936-2507. And anything associated with fleet, which consists of glass and windshields, aftermarket automotive parts, body and paint shop, light and heavy exhaust shops, et cetera, that contact is Dave Orbach, and his email is daveorbach, O-B-R-O-C-K, at toledo.oh.gov. His contact number, 419-936-2507. Um, the Department of Neighborhoods, anything dealing with lead abatement projects, small rehab projects, which consists of window replacements, doors, vinyl siding, painting, et cetera, and lead abatement classes and other related things of that nature, um, his, um, their contact is neighborhoods at toledo.oh.gov. Telephone number is 419-245-1400. Um, diversity and inclusion, anything about how to be a certified MBE or WBE with the city, any assistance with locating MBE, WBE businesses within defined work types, applications and contact information for community partners that assist with disadvantaged um, businesses. Um, the email address is diversity and inclusion, D I B E R S I T Y, with the little ampersand inclusion at toledo.oh.gov. Phone number 419 245 1198. Purchasing anything dealing with planet bids, assistance with bid opportunities, and submitting of awards. Um, that email address is per supplies, P U R S U P P L I E S, at toledo.oh.gov. Contact number 419-245-1194. And then um, any questions that you have that are not directly answered this evening, or if you have any other questions that of anything we did not discuss, you can always contact our Engage Toledo operation, which is our 24-hour citywide um, resource call center at engagetoledo at toledo.oh.gov. And that number is 419-936-2020. Um, we did have a couple more questions that came through with the chat. So let me see if um, we can answer those. A couple comments that this is very helpful. Thank you very much for everyone that's involved. And then also, um, can a presentation document be shared with attendees? Um, once again, from Kelly O'Boyle. And the answer to that question is yes, Kelly. We will be updating this presentation and putting it on our website within the next um, 24 um, once again, um, if there are any other questions that are on the chat, which I'm not seeing, uh, once again, on behalf of Wade Kappa Cabbage and the, um, and the employees of the city of Toledo, we would like to thank you once again for participating in our program this evening, which will provide overviews of 2021 um, small contracts. Once again, this presentation will be posted on our website within the next few days. And if there are further questions that you may have, there will be contact information within this slide deck. Thank you very much and have a good evening.